Our biggest takeaway from the last playtest was performance. So we've been hard at work overhauling the core of PlanetSmith in order to not only increase performance, but to enable us to achieve some of our crazy goals, like full planet rendering with trillions of blocks. To do this, PlanetSmith needs to go on a big diet as it consumes way too much RAM. Before we continue, I have some exciting news. To celebrate New Zealand Games Week, there is a playtest for PlanetSmith right now. We hoped to have the game overhaul ready for this event. Unfortunately, it isn't quite ready yet, so we're calling this Playtest 2.5. But that doesn't mean nothing has changed. This playtest has our first prototype boss fight, more on that later, and a few performance upgrades that should help some of you that struggled last time. But the performance upgrades that I'm talking about in this video aren't in this playtest. They will have to wait for the next one. Head over to our Steam page after this video to join in. And if you want a fun way to support us, our previous games are all on sale too. Great fun if you like puzzle games. Globe Sweeper and Globe Sweeper Hex Puzzler were a precursor to Planet Smith, and they used the same core shape as Planet Smith. Links on screen now and in the description. Back to the video. To reduce the game's RAM usage, we have completely changed the way blocks are stored in game. Although they were compressed when saved to disk, blocks were uncompressed in RAM. This means that each block, be it air, dirt, stone, or anything else, took up two bytes of RAM. That doesn't sound like a lot, but a single chunk contains 4,096 blocks. So one chunk takes up 8,192 bytes. Still not a lot, but the game can easily have over a quarter of a million chunks loaded at any one time, meaning that blocks could take up two gigabytes of RAM. And that's before we add anything else, like textures or meshes. Also, since we're using two bytes for each block, and that data contains not only the block ID, but the block state, this left us with a maximum 4,096 different blocks. A lot, but definitely not enough, especially if modding gets added in the future. To combat this, blocks are now stored using a palette and palette index system. Each chunk of 16 by 16 by 16 blocks contains a palette. This is a list of all block types and states in the chunk. It contains an unsigned short for the block ID. This increases the maximum number of unique blocks to 65,535. A byte containing the block state. This is its rotation state and its geometry and an unsigned short containing lighting data. This will allow us to do block lighting in the future. Now, to index into this palette, each chunk also contains an index buffer. Like before, there is one index for each block in a chunk, but since this indexes into the palette instead of into all possible blocks, we only need to assign a nibble, which is half a byte for each block. As long as there is less than 16 different block types inside a chunk, which most of the time there is, this means that the chunk's buffer now only uses 2048 bytes, a quarter as much as before. If a chunk contains more than 16 different blocks, a byte is used to store the index, and in the worst case, where a chunk contains more than 256 different blocks, it uses 3 nibbles, which is still less than the 2 bytes from the old system. As a bonus optimization, any chunk that contains only air is skipped, meaning it takes up zero bytes. And if it contains only one block type, it stores the single block ID. After world gen, approximately two thirds of the world's chunks are only air. So this reduces our RAM usage dramatically. We have one third of the chunks stored and those chunks are a quarter of the size reducing our RAM usage to one twelfth of what it was before. Two gigabytes was a lot of RAM, but now this takes less than 200 megabytes, which means we can load even more chunks and hopefully be able to load entire planets into memory. We haven't just been working on performance. We have been thinking about some gameplay features too. We want boss fights to be a large part of PlanetSmith and key to progression through the game. They are planned to act as gatekeepers, holding key resources that the players will need to collect 
in order to progress the new planets. We have created our first prototype boss, which you can fight in the playtest right now. The boss is a giant scorpion, which has a few set attacks to dodge and has tough armor. As a bit of fun, there is a speedrun challenge to see if you can kill the boss the fastest from a fresh world. Make sure you set your world size to large if you want your score to count on the leaderboard. Let us know in the comments what you think of this boss and what we should name them. We have also spent this time improving our tooling. Check out our shiny new block manager. It creates these nice data files, making management easy and as the bonus that we'll be able to make this an easy to use modding tool in the future. My favorite new feature is that block properties are now shared. This way we can define the properties for a type of block like wood once and all wood blocks use the same stats. This makes it much easier to maintain and prevents silly mistakes. This brings us to our other huge change and the one I'm most excited for. We have completely removed physics meshes. Nearly all 3D games use a physics mesh for the world's environment. It's an infinitely thin mesh of triangles that define the world's boundaries. Objects like the player collide with this mesh, but sometimes, perhaps due to the player traveling too fast or getting forced between colliders, the player can get pushed through the mesh and fall out of the world. Planetsmith also suffered from this problem that some of you may have encountered in the last playtest, but not anymore. The player and all other objects in the world now use hexal physics. So instead of colliding against a physics mesh, the collisions now happen directly with the voxel data. This completely removes the possibility of falling through the world. At most, you could clip into a single block, but the block behind will prevent the player from going any further. This has a second big advantage, as it's much faster to do calculations against the voxel data than it is to do traditional mesh-based physics calculations. Also, one of our main performance bottlenecks was the creation of these physics meshes, which we can now completely skip, increasing frame rates and saving RAM. It's a win-win, with of course the big downside, and why I didn't do it initially, that the physics in Planetsmith now has to be completely custom. That's all this time, thanks for watching, and be sure to join our playtest. As always, come join our Discord if you want all the latest Planetsmith news, including alerts for future playtests. Discord always finds out first. We are also considering running a Kickstarter campaign in a few months and have some ideas for some great rewards for our early supporters. So, if this is something you would consider getting behind, be sure to follow Planetsmith on Kickstarter. Links to everything are in the description. Thanks to all our YouTube members, you help make our devlog series possible. See you next time where we'll be going back to the world generation. It's time to give that a big overhaul.